talk about preserve, so it really fitted with the theme. Um, and we're looking at three points of it this morning. So preserving skills, preserving people, and preserving ideas. Um, and Steve's also done quite some work here for Peter and Paul. So there's the piece as you walk in on the floor. Yeah, the threshold stone as you come, in th come through the door. Yeah, and um, yeah, it was like the, the film was playing before as well and the website that was up with the pictures that have been taken by a friend who does rock climbing, which I really love. He <laughs> <It> does, <laughs> yeah, he, he does a lot of work with, uh, with uh, rock climbers, so he's quite good with kind of rock and hands. Uh, uh, Jody Cliff should check, check out, out his work. <laughs> <laughs> So um, the first one of preserving skills, so it was the first learning, so where you retrained as a stonemason, where you went back to York. So yeah, so, uh, so uh, I used to work in sales years ago and I broke my leg and lost my job within a month and uh, always had it in my head to retrain as a stonemason or sculptor. Uh, so just was finding it difficult finding work, so thought why not just do it. Um, so I found a company based out of Stockport who were willing to take me on as an apprentice and um, so they did quite meaty masonry like uh, restoration and conservation of old buildings uh, so putting town hall steps back in and that type of stuff so I was working with the sort of preserving the built environment uh, and sort of learning all the old uh, techniques of, of, of doing that and but this, at the same time I was going to York College um, where they have the where they send a lot of the apprentices from York Minster um, to learn all the old kind of hand tooling ways of doing things. The, the book that they advise you get uh, was first published in 1923, just because all the skills are all exactly the same. And even with modern, modern tools and modern air tools and grinders, you still, the, the way you approach the stone is still the same, the way you mark everything out, the sort of architectural elements need to be the same if they're gonna be put back into uh, to a building. I loved it because I, I had a sneaky peek at the workshop yesterday and that, there's just like all the tools out and there's one like the big ball made from the, is it the bowling green? <laughs> yeah, um, uh, we, use, we use like a, like a, uh, a round mallet in masonry. Um, one of mine is, is made out of an old crown green bowls ball um, just because it's, it's, a, it's a type of wood that you can't get hold of anymore called lignum vitae that sinks in water and it's sort of super dense and um, it's, it's, it's just a really lovely tool. It's balanced really nicely. And I, I use quite a lot of old, old tools. Uh, my wife gets a bit sick of uh, antique hammers coming through the post. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> under, she's, banned me, she's banned me at the minute. <laughs> I'm not allowed to buy anymore. Um, but the, the way that they've been made, you can really tell that the, that the person who's made them has really take, has taken time to learn their craft and it, and it, and it aids sort of aids me in, in what I do. Okay. So how long, how long is the course? Cause... Uh, apprenticeship. Yeah. Um, I did it for two years. You can do a third year, but it's more for people who work in uh, cathedrals. Right. Um, but I think if I had my time again, I'd, I would want to work at a cathedral. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a thing, you can, you can become a journeyman. You can be, become a journeyman. Um, a lot, they do it a lot in, um, they do it a lot in Germany. Uh, they, you still get journeymen. In fact, the first, uh, the first carving festival I went to in York uh, was in 2010, and I was next to two journeymen, and they wear a certain garb. They've got like a, a waistcoat and like a crumpled leather top hat, and <laughs> and <laughs> cords, Are and they. It, uh, they, yeah, they kind of were. Um, but the, uh, you're only allowed to do up the, uh, the buttons for the amount of years you've been away because you're supposed to go out of the country for three years. And there's, there's a network of cathedrals where they just turn up on the doorstep and there'll be somebody who can get them some tools, get them some work, get them somewhere to stay, get them a bank account. And the, that network still... It's like cathedral still sort of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think I would, quite, I would quite like to do that because I think it's, it's interesting because you, you get to work with different stones and different people have it's different incredible. techniques and you can then bring that back to so it's, it's something that we used to do in this country but have lost um, do you think it'll come back? there's a bit of a movement to bring it back yeah because there's, there's like a research in pilgrim walks and things so yeah 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 <laughs> Um, ah, lovely. So, well, when we were looking at, when we were talking yesterday about with people, 
So it was, um, it was kind of what you're saying about how the letter carving that really strengthen what you do um, lends itself to memorial work. So yeah, I, condensing um, people onto a yeah. So so I, I so I started to specialise in in letter carving, um, and that kind of lends itself really well to memorial work. Like I do I do do quite a lot of um, like house signs and mill wheels for outside people's cottages and whatnot, and um, it's uh, it, it's quite a slow process. But it's it's just it's super kind of relaxing and uh, it's a nice thing to do. <laughs> nice thing to do. There were some nice stories yesterday with the with the memorial. Well, uh, nice. There was also quite a yeah. Sad one I think it's um, yeah. You have to. I try not to get sort of too kind of invested in the people who come to me because you, you're dealing with bereaved families, and um, a, a mentor of mine, uh, John Nielsen, he he sort of. Keeps, keeps his relationship with his clients very much sort of, I'm doing this for you, that's it. And then there are other letter carvers who um, take, a, take a lot more of a sort of, uh, like a counselor kind of a role, like try and sort of lead people into sort of different things. Um, I've, I'm kind of in the middle somewhere, just because I think you can, if you, if you allow yourself to be invested um, in people's stories, I think you can, you can do a lot more of, of better work. For them, like I, I, um, I delayed, it was heartbreaking. I, I had a lady who, um, her granddaughter, uh, her daughter had had a stillborn little girl, and uh, she wanted a pebble with with uh, the name on, um, and uh, she to carry it, yeah, she, oh, to yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she needed to travel, so it needed to be small because she had a brain tumor and she couldn't drive anymore. And it, after the meeting, I just I had to go home. I was just I was in, <laughs> in bits. Um, but it, it sort of it, it spurred me to do. It. It's one of the nicest objects I've I've made. Well, the quote um, yesterday, with, like emotional. When you're emotionally invested, you do your best work. You, which yeah, I thought was yeah, best yeah, best. yeah. You do. And it's it's one of those. I I, I won't. A lot of the memorials I, I don't put on on social media or on my website no. or anything. I I just think it's especially things like that. That's so it's so personal. It's. But it's, it, it, I mean, it's a funny thing because it's, it's the nicest thing that I've ever, <laughs> I've ever made. And, and I, but I don't, I, w I won't show it to anyone. <laughs> but it's lovely that they've got it. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes yeah. that's enough. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. So then, um, so for them with the pub, it kind of leads on to the public art pieces, um, which is where the preserving ideas comes into it. Um, and you were saying about the, the write about what you know quote for writers. So you kind of took that approach with masonry. Yeah, so um, I, I was asked to, uh, to sort of pitch for, uh, for, for a public art project. And um, because I'm, I've, you know, I've not been to kind of art college, so I didn't really know sort of how to approach it. So I, so I just, I, I kind of remembered that thing about uh, when you're writing, you're supposed to write, write about what you know. So I, I sort of approached it in, in the same way that I would um, a memorial. I kind of uh, researched the area, researched sort of uh, what, what type of stone would be relevant, what type of kind of uh, sort of history that, that thing had. So, uh, um, so we did, one of the projects that we did was a, uh, was, um, I got approached by an uh, architect to say, could I do people's thumbprints, uh, handprints or signatures in stone? And I was like, oh, But it no. was great where that came from as well. Can we say that? <laughs> <laughs> the, the woman from the sandwich shop across the road wants handprints or signatures in the stone. I was like, does she indeed? <laughs> <laughs> I was calling her for the purpose, Maureen. I don't know if that's what she's called, but I was like. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so, I, so I was like, well, because I, I, I can't read my own signature, and handprints just puts me in mind of like pet memorials, you know, like a cat's <laughs> paw with <laughs> mittens or whatever. Um, so I thought, well, why don't we take like a thumbprint and blow it up big, and then take like a section of it and have, a, have that as a texture? Um, and then I couldn't sleep that night, and I was just end up sort of staring at my thumb. And I thought, <laughs> 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 um, in the moonlight, um, <laughs> um, and so I thought they look a bit like a maze or like a labyrinth. So what we did was we, we took people's 
thumbprints and made them into geometric uh, labyrinths, which are then cut in memorial quality uh, York stone, which were then placed in a wall around this new, uh, some new housing. Um, because it was it was nice because it, it they, they were quite nice looking things, and the, where they were placed, it, like a kid going past could run their finger around it, oh, or if you sort it. of if you wanted to sort of research it, you could you could find the uh, find the Facebook page and learn about the people. Um, and, and well, and the people was quite a funny story as well because I think the idea <laughs> had got through. Yes. Yeah, so won the won the pitch, won the thing, and then they went, oh, there's been a confusion two of the, like most of the people were dead, that you needed to get the fingerprints from. Yeah, I had a, I had a call from, from <laughs> Philip from Mosborough Historical Society to say, um, it was like, oh Steve, you've got a bit of a throat problem. Like, oh Steve, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> We've had the results in, but the first two people are both dead. <laughs> like, I, I can't take the thumbprints of dead people. I mean, what, <laughs> <laughs> so we had to sort of click to the third, who was Fred Rotherham, who was the, uh, an 89 year old ex miner. So I was like, you can't get much more South Yorkshire than that. Yeah. So, um, so I met him in the sandwich shop, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ori. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I also liked what you were saying about um, uh, for public art as well. So you'd be contacted by. Like quantity surveyors sometimes as well, so, and they're like, I like the one art, please. Oh, yeah, with, <laughs> the, with, with, can I have an art? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it, it, with, with public art, because it comes through the uh, the planning provision for, for new build housing, um, you, you're dealing with quantity surveyors who it's just a box to tick for them, they don't care. Um, so I had a meeting with um, with a guy, uh, and we were walking around the site, and he's, he was going, He's like, Well, could it be like uh, like an oak leaf? So I was like, yeah, um, I mean, it could, like a fern. He's like, fern, fern, brilliant. So I was like, are we just pointing at things? And it's that, and is that, is that, that the process here? <laughs> but they, they ended up, um, he sort of, he kind of battered me down on price. And uh, I ended up coming up with a concept that was uh, uh, like a revealed, cause it's a lot of boulders that I do, because it's sort of permanent and difficult to kick over and whatnot. Um, so like a revealed sort of pattern, so as if there was a, a pattern underneath the boulder and you're kind of parting the sort of the natural surface. Um, but just between the jigs and the reels, it ended up costing like five times more because they, the quarry sent the, a boulder that was 12 tons and they couldn't get it off the wagon, so they had to spend two, <laughs> spend two grand, on, grand a on a crane to get it off, <laughs> which is like more than my fee. I was like. <laughs> and then you were saying the piece is like then it's just this small oh it's just it just too many people got their hands in it and it ended up being tiny and <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, no. um so i think yeah does, is there um any piece that for peter and paul that's that can be talked about like the um oh i know as well which one the music the the man with the fabulous name the jazz man oh right yeah uh, yes yeah, so i've got coming up um, uh, a public art piece which is going outside uh, some of the flats at the bottom of the parkway um, and they wanted something sort of from the history of the area so I, uh, I did a bit of research and all I could find was that there used to be a, a slaughterhouse on the site so I was like well and also they've, they've got a tiny budget as well so I was, I was thinking well what, what type of amorphous blob do you want <laughs> you know, so, so I was thinking you know, maybe like blood cells or so, you know, but, uh, but they, um, I, I put it out on, on a Facebook history group and somebody got in contact to say that, that there was a, um, his in-laws used to run a pub that was on the site in the 50s and had um, the Sheffield's first regular jazz night and had all these blues legends from, from the States over. Um, one of which was Big Bill Brunsey. I was like, that's great, it's got to be something. And then um, somebody got in touch to say that it was a, uh, a guy called Champion Jack Dupree, who married a girl from Halifax when he was over here, um, who was like found sort of asleep on some benches outside. So uh, I'm going to do a Champion Jack Dupree song and put it into, make like a graphical sound wave and have that kind of carved in the, uh, in the side just to sort of 
celebrating, <laughs> celebrating <laughs> being there. <laughs> no, but, I look, it's, but it's that research that's really nice, that then they're really abstract. Like what I loved with the thumbprint is maybe people don't even realise that's where it comes from. But yeah, yeah. The fact of that, and then it's bigger, and then the kid going around getting touched. Yeah, I think, it's, it's, uh, I think that's... The, um, that interaction, I think. Is yeah, I think it's a sort of abstracting things just away from like a signature. Um, is you know there needs to be like a, a stronger concept behind behind things than just a something. Do you think you're because um, you were saying that you were from sales before? So has it really kind of triggered more ideas of like does your mind work differently? Um, you can sort of uh, uh, I don't know um, you can kind of sort of present sort of something like this. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I, I don't the really sales mind. sales talk may have been a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I was terrible at it anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, what, what was the piece that you did here for Pete and Paul, the one that's on the threshold? Uh, the threshold stone, as you walk in, uh, is a piece of... Um, I quite like using stone from, from around here. We're quite blessed sort of where we are. There's some really nice, really nice natural stones. So that's uh, one called Hopton Wood, which is quarried just outside of... Uh, Buxton um, and they, they came up with a design and uh, was sort of I ended up having to <laughs> where my workshop is the, the, there's not really um, it's an, an old cutlery factory so there's a lot of people's cars parked around and it was the piece that I got was too thick for them to install properly so I had to trim the back off it which just made so much dust and it was limestone dust and so after a hard day with like a mask on and all this it's like working under the sea um, <laughs> I ended up having to like wash seven cars <laughs> and then the day like, brilliant. <laughs> but I've done, <laughs> but, um, but I've, done, I've done a bit of work for Peter and Paul. They've, uh, Should have charged them so it's an art know, installation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Being carefully Be part of it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's nice to work down there because it's, it's a bit of a sort of community and everybody helps each other out a bit. Um, Beautiful. And there's there's um, previous speaker Mamnik as well. That's just across yeah, the, yeah, yeah. across the hallway. Yeah, I went there yesterday. It's just lovely. I liked on the on the ceiling as well. So there's uh, your photocopy printouts of all these beautiful ceilings from is it cathedrals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just printouts all around the wall. Yeah, a lot of people come in and say, Look, "Have you done these?" No, I haven't. Well, like I guess. Um, is there any um, of the pieces that are out today that, um, yeah, I guess everyone can have a look around at Yeah, yeah. There? So, um, so the one, there's one in the middle there, um, which uh, I, uh, I did a public art piece, uh, which is up in Shire Green, um, and uh, used a, a stone quarried at a little place called Once a Week Quarry. Um, awesome. which is, yeah, <laughs> it's a lovely old name. Um, so it's just outside of uh, Bakewell. And we came up with a, uh, a, a typeface, well, we kind of designed a typeface to be used specifically with that stone because it's, it's so full of fossils and it's quite, they're quite glass-like to cut. So it needed to be something that, uh, that was kind of raised and they were kind of chunky enough that if I lost a corner to it, like a fossil popped off, it didn't, you could still read it. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's the same, so same stone, same typeface. It's consider when designing yeah, a typeface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't want any fossils. <laughs> um, Shall, shall we see, has anyone got any questions? Because we wanted to kind of have, because yeah, we're doing it as an interview, if there was something more open. Have people got questions? What's your favourite material to work with? Um, there's a, uh, there's a, a, a York stone called um, Woodkirk, which is just really lovely to work with. It's, it's quite kind of responsive and uh, you can get a really nice line on it. You know, it sort of holds a really nice line. You get really crisp results. But um, I, I've just found a, like another York stone, which I'm going to be using for a, for a project with um, South Yorkshire Housing. And I had a memorial uh, ordered in it. And I just had a sort of, where have you been all my life moment when I started going. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so it's just really beautiful, fine grain. Um, it's, it's lovely stuff. Anyone else? Where else do you get the work from? Because you've got quite a mix of clients outside of you. I've always got... Uh, I find it really difficult promoting, figuring out how to promote myself. Um, so I put quite... I put, when I first started off, I put money into, um, 
into sort of websites and getting on listings and, and all that, but it just, people don't know to Google for hand cut lettering, you know, it's, it's not something you sort of, um, so, I, so I ended up just doing, uh, doing like heritage skills events and um, farmers markets uh, and, and just demonstrating because, um, and I found that was far more valuable than, than, uh, than sort of having like a, uh, having a website even. <laughs> and so a lot of, a lot of memorial work comes through uh, word of mouth now and um, as well because, because I used to work in sales, uh, I, I, I did a, um, some business coaching a little while ago and the, uh, some focus of it was on sales. And I was thinking, I used to do this for a living. Like, why am I not doing it for myself? Like, I didn't care about my job before because it was companies that I'd, you know, I'd, I'd no investment in. But being able to sort of ring up people and, uh, you know, promote myself that way. I, th I don't think there's any sort of, there's many stonemasons who do that. So you're kind of above 95% of the people to, yeah. before you start, you know. Because um, at the at the farmers market stuff, because had because a lot of the work that you've done is also quite contemporary. I think you're in quite a unique space because um, you were on my radar quite a, quite early on, um, like and it was through someone at Leeds, so it's like quite a reputation. Okay. Um, so I just wondered, like, did that start? Like, when did that start in the process of? Because. If you're doing like the more because you think of the farmers markets, I guess being like more traditional crowd, more yeah. than memorial, but certainly like the public art pieces or like working together with Peter and Paul here, or just and uh, you know the music uh, on the on the apartment. So like more of that contemporary work. Um, the, they've got quite a, a good guy at, uh, at Sheffield City Council in the planning department, who's the public art officer, uh, who uh, um, for. We did the, uh, you know, those, those totem poles that are outside the courts. We did the stone panels on, uh, on those and we kind of doorstepped him at a, uh, at a life drawing class. <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> With a piece of the stone that we, we were going to propose using. And I'd, I'd, uh, I was just trying it out. So I'd, um, I'd carved the word best in it and it didn't have a name. Because most all stones have names. They're like Mandale and Woodkirk and, um, and this stone didn't, didn't have one, and, and so we, uh, he was asking about it, and he um, it was from Frogger, and so he's like, oh, Frogger best. I was like, well, you've named it now, you've got to give it to us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, fantastic, is he still there? Is he still yeah, 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 I think, yeah, he's, um, I think it's good that they've, you know, he's managed to kind of survive the, the yeah. austerity cuts and all that. I think it's important to, to have, else you just get loads of identikit, yeah. things with no sort of, no kind of touchstone to, a bit of personality about the place. Because and how I mean, you mentioned like all the all the uh, stones have different names and stuff. Is there like a big book with all the names? In it? How do you like in is Game it, of Thrones? Is it just tales of <laughs> 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 yeah, slabs. Like. No, I, there's not really no. Um, I think you just you just kind of when 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 you when I find a new stone like like with the um, the fossil limestone, um, it's um, you have to kind of learn the stone. You, you, you sort of you, you kind of go through a process of learning of how it behaves and what you can and can't do with it, um, and that, for, for that one, it's, it's it's really it's very difficult to use. Um, but I, th I think I've. I've <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all right. Though. Have we got any more questions? Hi. Yeah, it's just a quick one about sort of your ongoing development now. Obviously, you've left the apprenticeship, and, and you mentioned the German journeyman. Yeah. Um, so are you largely self-directed for your ongoing development, or are you a member of a, a, a formal um, of like yourself? No, there's, um, I'm a member of the sort of Heritage Craft Association, um, but there's no kind of, they don't really kind of direct you, they're just sort of like a website really. But um, I, I found that the, uh, with the letter carving thing, I, I found that um, the inscriptions that I could cut, because it could only be as good as the ones that I could draw, so I ended up sort of walking backwards slightly into learning calligraphy. Um, so I, I um, went down to the Art Workers Guild to present my portfolio and got onto the advanced training scheme for the Society of Scribes and Illuminators. Excellent. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is it's quite kind of trad calligraphy. Um, so a lot of people, there's a lot of nib chat. You know, not like nibs, inks, like a lot of them. <laughs> 
<laughs> which I, I'm, I'm not a calligrapher, so I don't really kind of... Chat I do, Yeah, I don't really I don't know what they're talking about most of the time. But, um, I, so that was a three-year course. Um, there's two residential weekends a year for three years. Um, and so I've, I've completed that now, and I've, I've presented sort of um, some of this stuff down at King's College uh, for the... Um, they have, like, a big do down there. Um, so okay. yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd, I mean I'd, I'm not quite sure sort of where to go next with it. I quite want to um, sort of explore a bit more kind of bigger, uh, more kind of sculptural pieces and sort of bring a bit of kind of letter carving into into that. Um, it, was, it was kind of related to that. Okay, if you've got an ideal project. What's the sort of like something you've never done before that would be a real challenge? Um, something kind of. Bigger than a car. <laughs> that makes sense. Because <laughs> um, at the minute, the biggest thing I've done was about was a twelve-ton boulder, and it was it was probably about the same size as like a van. So something maybe maybe bigger than that. I've also had an, an idea of a. Um, I'm waiting for somebody who's got a park or a massive garden uh, to sort of. I quite want to collaborate with a writer, so we can do sort of like uh, some sort of like a poem trail that is different each way you, get, you go around it makes a different sort of narrative um, do you like some of the things like why not associates have done in the northwest sort of like carpets and yeah 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 um yeah so there's some really there's some interesting stuff going like uh going around I'm, I, uh, yeah a pull back to craft it's again a pull back to craft a bit as well with, and physical type spaces and narratives and stories. How do you mean? Just that there's a bit of a trend to go oh, towards right. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the, sort of the hand, like the handmade thing is is sort of people kind of care what, what you know who's 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 made things. Like I, I think that people come to me because they know that I'll take my kind of full care and attention the whole process long, and they're buying that process from me as well as the end uh, the end thing. And you're also saying yesterday as well, there was the, because was the theme being preserved, and then it was about working so much with your hands as well, preserving your sanity. Because it's just <laughs> yeah. like, I think so many people are on screen, so I think everyone latches on to, oh, we could go do some, some physical work with you as well. So I think yeah, people yeah, yeah. enjoy that process as well as you make. Yeah, I did a, um, for the Sheffield Society of Architects, they, uh, they had like a um, kind of skills day where uh, four ladies come down and we'd, uh, I gave them a little piece of stone and did like a Roman letter to start with because they're, they're sort of quite easy to, to learn on. And um, we got halfway through and uh, I was like, oh, we should have made it spell something. <laughs> and um, Anya, so she, she was like, it doesn't spell arse. So <laughs> when they finished, they got them all stood up <laughs> next to each other. <laughs> yeah. oh, I love a bit of, bit of swear. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think just we've got time for maybe one more. Has anyone got? Yeah. Just wondering how, like, uh, how much computers or computer-aided design like uh, impacts on your industry and how much you use it. Um, I, I, I don't really use it at all. Uh, I do everything like draw everything out by hand. I've got a big drawing board at the at the workshop, and so I, I can't even work on scale. I have to work I have to work big, else I, I can't I can't get my head around it. Um, but computer aided stuff, there's there's a it, there's a lot of um, a, a lot of companies are investing in computer controlled uh, like robot arms and um, and that type of stuff that that still have to, that you can just kind of set going overnight. So there's a lot of there's a lot of people losing their jobs and having to sort of reskill. But I think the sort of the um, that's why I've kind of specialised because they they can't currently do what I do. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I think uh, <laughs> it's nice to keep that, that some of the handcrafted. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Be yeah, I think as well the um, just being able to sort of to uh, it gives it gives you it gives work a bit more depth if it's sort of if it's based in 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 uh, like old skills in skills that have been passed down and there's there's so much kind of depth to that. Um, so sort of to be explored, I think there's uh, you come up with some really interesting. Uh... I love it. Well, I think I think if we round it up there, um, there is coffee. So yeah, so.
so um, first of all, a round of applause for Steve. Thank you. I think Chat, Chat Nibs might be my favourite quote. <laughs> <to be honest. laughs> um, yeah, so there is coffee. We've got um, 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes to half an hour left just to mingle, chat. If you haven't got a book, get a book, coffee, and thank you all so much for coming. It really means a lot. Thank you.